there's a lot in here. I will talk with you Monday about what to be, what to expect for the exam on Tuesday, specifically the written response. Essentially, the written response would be equation solving, is what I would say. Give me one second. <clears throat> But again, on Monday, what I'll do is I'll um, give you more refined details in terms of that. I don't know how deep you've gone into this yet. Again, there's so much material in this unit that I've broken the review down. So this, there's a section on graphs of exponential and logarithmic functions. There would be a section on solving exponential equations. There would be a section on laws of logarithms, on and on and on and on. So again, I don't know how deep you've gone into this yet, but it doesn't matter. Let's spend some class time here going over questions because I'm sure some of you already have questions. Any questions? Go ahead, Zebby. Number two? Okay. So we have a function y equals negative b to the x plus 5 where b is greater than 1. And you're asked to determine the y-intercept and the range. So what makes this a math 30 question? Other than the content, what makes this a Math 30 question as opposed to the type of question you would see in 10 or 20 is that you are not told the values of some of the parameters in this equation of the function. So you can't merely put this into your graphing calculator and get an answer. Well, that's a bit of a lie. You can, and I will show you how we can cheat the system in a bit. But the intention is this. And I'm going to talk about not cheating the system because this could be a written response question where you would have to determine the y-intercept of this function, you would have to determine the range of this function, and you would have to explain how you arrived at that. And the explanation would not be, I put it into my calculator. You know that when you have y is equal to b to the x, everyone, where b is greater than 1, which is what you're told in this question right there, b is greater than 1, you know the properties of this function. This is an increasing exponential function. With the x-axis being a horizontal asymptote, the y-intercept being 1, and as I said, it's an increasing exponential function. The relative or actual steepness of this graph or how rapidly it climbs depends on the value of b. If b is 2, it climbs pretty rapidly, but not as rapidly as if b were 3 or 4 or 5 or 8.8. .8. So when we take a look at this statement here, there's two ways we can, we can do this for the y-intercept. What's happening is b to the x in going from b to the x as a function to y equals negative 1 times b to the x then plus 5, we've introduced a parameter of a of negative 1 and a parameter of k of 5. And there's, we're getting closer to the diploma exam. I realize it's still a couple months away, but I really want to start going deeper and deeper into stuff whenever possible. So if this were a written response question, you could answer it by saying, by writing out, there is a vertical reflection followed by a vertical translation of five units up. And then you could proceed to answer the question by sketching the result. Now, I've, I've painted myself into a corner here, so if I were to have written this on a, on a diploma exam or an exam, I would now redraw this graph somewhere. I would 
and anticipating what's going to happen here, I would leave enough room on the axes. I would redraw this graph, and I would say this is y equals b to the x where that's 1. And I don't think you need to explain why that's the case. That's your starting function. I would then sketch this and write that this is y equals negative 1 times b to the x. And then if I was feeling really ambitious, I would sketch that so that it's translated five units up. I would also include you know, the asymptote here, but then someplace else I would put, well, I better draw in the asymptote first. Two, three, four. The asymptote is going to be at five because we have translated this green graph up five, so the asymptote is up five. And you can see very clearly that the y-intercept is negative 1 here. And if I translate that up 5, it's going to be at 4, which, I, you know, I kind of hope makes sense because the y-intercept is 1 below the asymptote. So then you could write in here that this is y equals negative b to the x plus 5. Now, this would get more difficult if it was b to the x plus k, and they didn't tell you it was 5. But now you would be able to look at this, and you would be able to see that the y-intercept of this function is equal to 4, and the range is y is less than 5. Is that OK? Now, you don't have to do it by sketching the graph. Going back to the realization that we have a is negative 1 and k is 5, and that's a vertical reflection and a translation of 5 up, you could have said that the mapping if you're a mapping kind of thinker, the mapping is, is that x doesn't change because these are vertical things that are happening to the graph. The y gets multiplied by 1 and then added to 5, or 5 added to it. And then you could say, well, the original y-intercept was 0, 1, so that would map to 0, 1 plus 5, which is the original y-intercept is mapping to the new y-intercept of 4. I don't know that you can really, well, I guess you could do mapping for the asymptote. It's just that there's no x-coordinate for the asymptote. And I think I would be more comfortable for the asymptote just writing out that if the asymptote is on the x-axis at y equals 0 for b to the x, reflecting it doesn't change the location of the asymptote but shifting it up 5 will put it at y equals 5. All that being said, if this were a multiple choice question or as it is a numerical response question, you can cheat the system by making up values for the parameters that match what they told you about the parameters. The only parameter here is b, the base. It's And when I say the base is a parameter, I don't mean it's a transformations parameter. It's just an exponential parameter. But I can make up some number, uh, 2. I'm going to use 2, in which case, if I'm really stuck, and I'm, I'm a little, not disappointed is the wrong word. If this is what you have to do, then I haven't done my job as a Math 30 teacher. If you didn't understand anything that I just explained in that whole explanation, and you're saying, I have to do this to get the answer to the question, then I've failed. But we could do this if we were really stuck. Maybe we start getting you know, the, sweat, the exam sweats or something, and we panic. I'm going to go zoom standard. 
and just see what it looks like. I can very easily find the y-intercept. The asymptote is a little more difficult. Um, we look at that and we suspect it's 5, so you might want to go trace negative 4. Oh, it's the y-coordinate's 4.9 something. Trace negative 9, the y-coordinate's 4.9 something. It really looks like it's approaching as we move to the left 5. We could go to our table. Um, and check out. I'm going to go over to Y, so oh, we can't do that, eh? So you could go over to your table and look at large negative values. Uh, now, we haven't really talked about this yet. We're going to in the next unit. See how the Y coordinate is 5 there? It's not. You're it's so close to 5. Your calculator's recording 5, but I think if you scroll over, you can see it's not. If you scroll up enough, will this number at the bottom of the screen actually say 5? Probably. You'd have to go pretty far, I think. Anyway, I think you should know it's 5 because it's shifted 5 up. Is that okay, Zebby? I know that was a long explanation, but I think there's some important review ideas in that question. Other questions? Go ahead, Jason. Four? So we have the graph of y equals log base 3 of x plus 6. I, uh, again, if I were emperor of the world, I would change the way some things are done in math. I, I would prefer to write this as log base 3 of x with the 6 being added in front. Uh, only because I think there might be some people that look at this log base 3 of x plus 6 and they couple wa that with the fact that I've told you numerous times, oh, we don't put brackets, but brackets are really there and some people might think there are brackets around the x plus 6. That's not the intention. So, the bottom line is this graph is the graph of y equals log base 3 of x shifted 6 units up. So this is very similar to the question that Zebi asked about where we have to start off with the basic exponential function. We have to start with the basic exponential function of y equals log base 3 of x. We need to know what that looks like. So this is more involved, everybody. I suppose you could put it in your calculator, but your calculator really does a crappy job of graphing logarithmic functions. It really does. I, I'm not just saying that to dissuade you from doing it. It's just lousy. So how I determine... And I'm going purposefully slow here because we have lots of time and these are important things. I start off by saying, is it log base 3? I start off by saying y equals log base 3 of x and y equals 3 to the x are inverses. Now, I hope that most of you know what log base 3 of x looks like as a function looks basically like this with an asymptote on the y-axis. But if you don't, then you should start off by saying, what does y equals 3 to the x look like? y equals 3 to the x looks something like that with a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. So this is y equals 3 raised to the x. This is y equals log base 3 of x. And I hope you're, everybody, you're with me on this. The only reason I graph the yellow function is so that I can see what the logarithmic function looks like. I'm reflecting it visually 
across the line y equals x. Okay. So anyway, Jason, we start off with that bluish function log base 3 of x and we're going to translate it up 6 units. So I'm not really sure it's valuable for me to draw that on top of this. But if I were to redraw it, well, you know what, I will draw it on top of it, but I'm going to get rid of some of this other stuff. If I take that and shift it up six units, that asymptote will still be there. And I don't know how relevant that is to the problem. But what I'm going to get is something that looks like that. The, the x-intercept, by the way, will be very, very tiny. It will be closer and closer to that asymptote. So now we can start to understand the question, is the range y is greater than 0? Well, no. The range of any logarithmic function is y is any real number. Is there a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 6? Well, no. The vertical asymptote didn't move because this was a vertical translation. Um, the graph passes through 9, comma 8. Well, let's, let's just leave that because we can't answer that by looking at the graph. It has an x-intercept of 1. No way. The x-intercept was 1. It had to get smaller because we shifted it up. So the answer is, is that B or C? C. The reason it is, is if you want to confirm this point, what 9, 8 means is that when x is 9, y is 8. So we can check that by seeing what log base 3 of 9 then plus 6 is. Well, log base 3 of 9 is 2 because... 2 is the exponent to which you raise 3 to get 9. So you end up with 2 plus 8, sorry, 2 plus 6, which is 8, which is true. And that would be another way we could have found it. You could have just looked at C and said, well, let me see if that's right. Liam. Can you start again, please? What do you envision in your head when you say put a value in the formula for B? What would you be doing? Oh. Sure, yeah. Um, however, no, I'm going to take that back. However, it, negative 6 might not work for various reasons. Negative 6 might not work because that's where the asymptote is, or negative 6 might not work because that's not in the domain. And in fact, when you put negative 6 in for x, you can't calculate that. Log base 3 of negative 6 is not defined. Uh, because if you just want to memorize something, you are not allowed to take the logarithm of a negative or zero. Uh, but the deeper meaning or reason for that is if you had log base 3 of negative 6, you're asking yourself to what do you raise 3, which is a positive number, to get negative 6. Well, a positive number raised to an exponent will always be positive which is why we can't take the log of a negative. So negative 6 is not defining the function. You cannot use negative 6, but that doesn't mean there's an asymptote there. So no, that, that wouldn't work. Other questions? Okay, I want to point something out to you before I let you get to work here. Um, if I gave you this function, y equals log base 2 of x, and we're going to transform that function into y equals log base 2 of x plus 32. 
it's pretty clear that that function is being translated 32 units up. I think we have a k value here of 32. So we arrive at that function by taking y equals log base 2 of x, and we shift it up 32 units. Or, and I'm going to write the other possibility down and ask you to think about this, we take y equals log base 2 of x, and we horizontally stretch it which many of you will be looking at immediately and going as he lost his head horizontally stretched I want to make sure I get this right here I'm going to have to change this, I'm sorry. Oh, I buggered that up. Um, I'm going to change this to 5. I apologize. Okay. So, sorry about the 32 thing. You'll see why I was thinking 32 in a second. I, I've got something backwards in my head. But if I gave you y equals log base 2 of x and we transform it into y equals log base 2 of x plus 5, k is 5, one explanation for the new graph would be we take the original, we shift it up 5. Okay? However, instead we could take y equals log base 2 of x and horizontally stretch it by a factor of 1 over 32. This is a difficult question, but you might see this on my exam, and you're probably going to see something like it on the diploma exam. The reason is, and this is really kind of greasy, 5 is log base 2 of 32. 5 is the exponent to which you raise 2 to get 32, which means that the function y equals log base 2 of x plus 5 is the same as y equals log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of 32. And since those are the same base logarithm, we can put these together as log base 2 of 32x because the sum of separate logarithms is the logarithm of the product of the separate arguments. So when you compare these two functions, which I'm going to highlight both in blue because they're identical functions, this is exactly mathematically the same as this. When you look at the function highlighted in blue at the top, you see k equals 5. And when you see the function highlighted at the bottom, you see b equals 32, which means it's horizontally stretched by a factor of 1 32nd, the reciprocal of b. It's very difficult for you to go from log base 2 of x plus 5 to log base 2 of 32x, but it's possible. You know, the other possibility, so you get that these two are the same? We've encountered this before in the very first unit that you could have one series of transformations that produces an end result, 
And you can get that same end result by using a different series of transformations. Um, I think if you were given this first, it's easier to change it into log base 2 of x plus 5 because you would change it into log base 2 of x plus 32. You would say that's 5. So a horizontal stretch by 1 32nd as a factor is the same as a shift upwards of 5 units. And I just wanted to go through that with you because I, I'm not sure if I actually have anything like that in the review package. Okay. Any questions with that? Okay, one final kick at the cat. Horrible expression, I know, but any other questions right now from the review package? I don't mind. This is why we're here. Go ahead, Zebby. 13? So we have a graph of y equals b to the x and a graph of y equals 1 over b to the x where b is greater than 0. Hmm. This one. So the x-intercept is. Now, you will notice that aside from choice c, all of these choices are not numerical. right? And I'll show you how we could weasel and maneuver our way around the system and kind of cheat in a bit. But the intention here is for you to know from, um, well, I would say formally probably from grade 10, but maybe earlier, that an x-intercept is always found by letting y equal 0, because any point on the x-axis is a y-coordinate of 0. So we're given the equation of the function, which is y equals b multiplied by the base c logarithm of ax, and we need to change y to 0. And we have to solve that. So, you know, part of me just wants to say, well, you have to divide both sides by b. But the reason you have to divide both sides by b is when you take a look at what's happening to x, you're, you're multiplying x by a, then you're taking a logarithm of that, and then the last thing you do to x after all of that is you multiply by b. So that has to be the first thing you undo. So when you divide both sides by b, you're still left with 0 equals log base c of this should be ax. And now we're at that stage where you go, well, I don't know what to do, but it is a logarithmic expression, so let's rewrite it in exponential form. And I can write c raised to the 0 equals ax. c raised to the 0 is 1. D by definition, you know, when you raise anything to the 0, you get 1, other than 0. 0 to the 0 is just not defined, but... So we can see that the answer is the x-intercept will be 1 divided by a. Uh, now, could we have kind of cheated the system, as I say? Well, yeah, you can graph this on your calculator. However, you have to choose values for the parameters a, b, and c that make sense in the context of the question. And you also have to be aware that your graphing calculator does a really crappy job of graphing logarithmic functions. So the first thing I would do is I would, if I were going to do this, log six, is I would choose a base logarithm of log base 10. Then I don't need to worry about change of base formula on my calculator. I don't need to worry about log base functions for UTI-84 people. Um, does it say anything about B? It doesn't say anything about B. Let's choose, uh, let's choose B equals 1.3. I'm going to tell you in a bit why I'm choosing kind of a peculiar number for B. Uh, A, I'm going to choose another weird kind of number, 2.2. 2. 
So what I'm going to be graphing is 1.3 times the base logarithm, the base 10 logarithm of 2.2x. And again, I'm just using a base 10 logarithm because it makes my job easier to enter this into my calculator. So 1.3 log, I don't need to enter the base because it's a common logarithm, of 2.2x. And we'll go zoom standard and remember that we're looking for the x-intercept. I can see there's an x-intercept there. The reason why I say your graphing calculator does a very poor job is this graph comes down against the x-axis or very, not x-axis, comes down very close to the y-axis. But if I were to turn the axes off, it, it doesn't look like it does that. There's a reason why it craps out here, but I don't need to get into it. The bottom line is we want to find the x-intercept. So perhaps I should zoom in. I'm going to choose zoom box. And stretch out a little box around that area that I'm pretty sure it's gr crossing the x-axis in. So I'm going to find the x-intercept. which is a zero. I scroll to the left of it. And again, this is kind of a last resort. This is, if you understand what you're doing, it doesn't take long to put y equals zero and solve the equation. So we're getting an x-intercept of, you know, 0.45454545. So now we go to the choices and we see immediately that the x-intercept is not zero. Is the x-intercept 2b? Well, we chose b as 1.3. So if the x-intercept was 2b, we would get 2.6. We would get twice that number. This is why I'm choosing kind of strange numbers. I don't want to choose 1 for everything because it won't necessarily tell me anything. So it's not 2b. Does that make sense, Evie? Okay. Um, it's not 2b. Is it... Is it A? Maybe it's A. Well, we chose A as 2.2, and we got 0.454545. It's not, it's not A. I mean by process of elimination, and I left B for the last one because we know it's the answer. Is it 1 over A? Well, what do we get when we take 1 divided by the value that we chose for A? You get 0.454545. So even though they don't give you any of the parameters, you can make some up and kind of reverse engineer which answer is correct. Other questions? All right, 49. Again, that left side of the equation looks almost, I can see why a student would think it's the logarithm of x plus y, but it's not. It's the logarithm of x, then plus y. That y is not part of the argument of the logarithm. So we have log base a of x, and we're adding y, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this just to make sure you get my point. This is equal to log base A of Z. So if you're asked to solve for Y, we have to subtract log base A of Z minus log base A of X, which we can write as a single logarithm. And as is, the, this is almost along the same lines as trig. When you see it, you go, oh, that was all? That was all. Sometimes with trig, when you see the right identity and you just put it in, it all falls into place. Does that make sense, Makai? Other questions?
All right, so we still have lots of time today. You have about 45 minutes here. Remember that your exam is Tuesday. I will get those assignments marked and back to you by Monday. Um, my recommendation is how much practice do you need to do to get ready for this exam between now and, say, Monday. I would say as much as you can. I know that you have to balance math with other classes, with your life, with work, maybe with your family. But if you want to do well, um, you're going to have to do a lot of significant amount of practice. I will be photocopying. I don't have it done yet. The uh, extra practice handout that we typically have that some of you pick up. There's an extra practice sheet for each section in chapter seven and eight, which is what this unit covers. But don't forget as well at the end of your unit handout, which you have that we've been working in, there's a whole boatload of questions there too. So I'll let you guys get to work. I'll go up and down the rows helping you out. And occasionally I may decide to come back up here and explain something from here because it would be easier for me and more beneficial for other people. All right, get to work, please.